Okay, in this video, I'm going to give you uh, some directions on how to go about uh, finishing one of the assignments that's just sort of thrown out there. Doesn't make much sense just looking at it. And uh, I accept that. So I'm going to go to assignments and just let you know what I'm talking about. In assignments, there is a uh, chapter 6 introduction to graphics link that talks about, well, it talks about chapter five and things like that, but that's the old book. You're using a newer book. Your book has graphics on chapter seven. And uh, we're going to be doing some of the more simple graphic stuff um, in the time we have left. The uh, exercise that I'm talking about here, the one that makes no sense, uh, turn in the code from 1027 in a Py document. I'll be changing those directions and adding this video so that it makes more sense to you. Uh, but basically what you need to do, and please just follow the directions in the video, I'm not going to be writing too many things down, but it's not too difficult. A moiré pattern, let me see if I can just do a quick search for a moiré pattern or effect. Um, you probably, if you're a student here, you don't remember the old TVs, and by that I mean the ones from when I was younger than you, the ones that were still around maybe 20, 30 years ago, they had different screens and the lines, uh, whenever they came too close together, which was all the time and uh, things got a little bit out, out of whack, uh, we got these uh, crazy uh, looking patterns and we call those moiré patterns. Uh, they uh, messed up TV cameras and people would complain, but that's how, those are long gone. We don't have the same thing with the uh, high definition. But we can sort of recreate it in uh, graphics programming. So I'm going to go and open my Repolit. And uh, I, I am already signed in. I have all my old files here. I'm going to start right away by clicking New REPL. It's a Python. And I will call this my moire. M-Y-M-O-I-R-E. I've been saying this for a long time. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I just say moire. If it's Moiri, but I like Moiri better. At any rate, here's my uh, coding environment. I'm going to get rid of that side. So we haven't touched on graphics yet, but I think that you'll find that this is pretty cool. And I'm going to put in some additional information that, that your book also has on how to create simple graphics so that you can play with this at your own at your own pace. I'm going to be writing the code pretty 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 quickly here. So. You remember the random uh, numbers that we did in the last assignment? Well, before we did any random stuff, we had to call a library. We had to say import random. And we're going to be doing something similar with uh, with graphics. We're going to be using a module called turtle. Imagine a little turtle that's drawing on the screen, um, whatever that means. Uh, but <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll send you and I'll post documentation with this assignment. Uh, just to cut it short, I'm going to call the library and just say that from turtle, that's the library, we're going to import everything. So that's an asterisk, that's a star, everything. Just like if it were a variable, it, it, it's everything that's in the turtle um, library. So I'm also going to need a, a random generator, that's a specialized random generator, and I'm going to say that from the random library we've used this before import another command that's called rand int so it's r a n d i n t and i'll move on to the next line these two can be together if you'd like just so that they're a little bit easier to follow i'm going to set the speed that's the speed at which it draws at zero this is the default we can make it faster we can make it slower for right now we're just going to use the default we're going to be creating a loop so just like the previous game that kept going back and forth and back and forth at the beginning and the end uh and it, while something was not done we're going to be keeping count so in order to keep count i need to use a uh, variable i'm going to use the variable x you can use your own variable, just remember the name of the variable and use it throughout. So x is going to be equal to 1. Pretty simple. Going to the next line. Now here's where the loop begins. I'm going to say that while, while x is less than 400, then, that's uh, the colon, go to the next line. 
and I'll space myself out here so that I don't get too uh, combobulated. I'm going to say that I'm going to pick three random uh, variables, and they're going to be R, G, and B. That means we're going to get values, random values for red, green, and blue. The uh, values of uh, these colors can go from 0 to 255. If you've taken classes with me before in Photoshop and in web design, you know that um, RGB are the primary colors uh, that uh, monitors use and light uses to displace uh, colors. So R, I'm going to say it's going to be equal to, this is going to be the random integer that we're going to get, and it's going to be somewhere between 0, comma, and 255. 255. So basically give me a random number between 0 and 255. Uh, it's really 256 uh, possibilities between 0 and 255 if you start counting at 0 and stop at 255. It's the same as if you set from 1 to 256. But 0 is a real number in computers, so I'm going to copy what I just typed because and you've heard me say in many, many videos I'm lazy when it comes to typing. So I copied and pasted this uh, request for a random number and I'm going to say that I want not only an R but I want a G and I want a B. Red, green, and blue random numbers. I'll now switch the color mode. Um, so I'll, I'll, we might talk about color mode more later but I just know that this is something that needs to be said. It's color mode parentheses 255 and then we're going to uh, change the color of the pen that the turtle is using to draw as it goes along the screen and we do that by declaring a pen color and that's going to be the values of r comma g comma b so all the random numbers that it picked it's going to just drop them in here going to the next line and uh, we're going to add some commands and they'll give you a uh, list of commands that you can try there's there's a whole bunch of them but some cool exercises that you can do on your own um, the first one that I'm going to do is uh, forward draw and basically it's going to be the distance of 50 pixels and we're going to add the variable x. So that's the x that we're doing. Um, we're adding one every time, every, every time that the loop goes around. So it's going to keep on adding. It's going to start as one, go to two, three, etc. Then we're going to make a right turn, RT. And it's going to go to the right and we're going to give it an angle, not quite a right angle. It's going to be 90 point. 911. To uh, keep the loop going, we're going to add 1 to x, so x will be equal to whatever x is, plus 1. And that's the loop. We're going to add one more command. I press enter a couple of times and then I backspace so that I am at the leftmost part of the line, and that way I can tell it that if somebody clicks, it's going they're going to exit so exit on click and open parentheses and just leave it as that so here's our basic routine let's see what happens when we run it well first of all it's going to try to import uh, something if it's properly spelled hopefully you caught that error as I was typing it and then type it yourself. Let me try to run again. And now I get a brand new window open. This is a uh, graphics window. Let me make it larger and see what's going on. We're seeing different colors because they're being randomly picked. I do believe I can make this larger if I only move it to the side and then expand it see uh, get a little bit of a better look at what's going on inside of that and well I guess as I was doing that I was clicking so it stopped but it still gave me enough uh, um, enough of a chance to see what's going on it was drawing a line each time longer so it's drawing 50 pixels worth of line plus one every time that it's going through the loop that's why it's, it's basically drawing a square if this were a 90 
degree turn, you know, a right angle turn, it would be drawing a square. But if we're drawing it over and over again, this way it's it's drawing a larger square every time and it's tilting just a little bit, 90.911. Let me stop that and let me do a change, make a change here. Instead of a 90, what if I try something like twice as much, 180, and try to run that. So this, because 180 is basically opening up the uh, opening up the square to being a, a, another shape, all completely different. Actually, I'm getting a pretty cool effect here. I'll let it draw, see if I can open that. Well, I'm sure I can, if I can see it. Well, maybe I can't, but maybe on your machine you can see it. I'll click Run Again, see if it'll give me a better chance. And maybe not. I'm running on a uh, virtual Chromebook, so I'm a little bit of at a disadvantage even. But if it's running on mine, I expect uh, your machine to be running a lot better than this. I'm going to go back to the original number, 90, and run it again. I can give myself a bit more space here so I can see that this is what I was expecting to see. If you want to change the um, the angle yourself or try other shapes, by all means do. Um, when you're done with this exercise, you can copy your URL and turn it in for a grade. And that is this part of chapter six. We'll continue on the next video with more graphics.